on August 4th, 2025, for the first time in human history, Indians succeeded in restoring a once eradicated species through the science of the extinction. After a 160 million year absence, our team is proud to return Dilophosaurus waterily to its rightful place in the ecosystem. Indians' innovations in genetics, biotechnology and conservation made it possible to accomplish something that's never been done before – the revival of a species from its long-standing population of zero. For the first time in millions of years, the dissonant screeches of these magnificent animals are once again heard through the streets of Arizona. The announcement you just saw was released not long ago by International Genetic Technologies, or Indian, after their so-called de-extinction of a real dinosaur. Unfortunately, we know that to not have been the case at all. The entire narrative around this species is a fabrication, since this Dilophosaurus is in fact a barely altered Macrochlamydos dilophosa, the giant frilled lizard, a modern-day agamid related to, as its name indicates, frilled lizards and heliolisks. While fully grown adults of the species can reach around 6 meters or almost 20 feet in length, Juveniles are much smaller, with subadults reaching around 3 meters, and it seems Indian has managed to keep them at this size by arresting their growth artificially. This size, while nothing to scoff at, still makes them vulnerable to being preyed upon by larger predators, especially in ancient times when they were often hunted by extinct Australian giants such as Tylacoleo or Megalania forcing them to evolve a series of defense mechanisms that help them survive. And for the time being, we will focus on their facultative bipedalism. Similar to other frilled lizards, Macrochlamydos will get up on its hind limbs and run when faced by a potential threat. This intimidation tactic, no doubt, placed them in Indian's radar in the first place, as the sight of a bipedal lizard certainly invoked the image of a theropod dinosaur to a degree. In the case of Indian's Dilophosaurus, minor alterations were made to allow slash force them to stay upright, including a heavier tail and more muscular legs. The differences between Macrochlamydos and Dilophosaurus are rather noticeable once you look at them closely. To begin with the most superficial, less extreme ones, Macrochlamydos distinctly lacks the characteristic upper jaw notch seen in Dilophosaurus, and the limbs of both creatures hint at very different types of locomotion. While the hind limbs of theropods are adapted to bipedality, being held straight down and anatomically similar to those of birds, themselves being the last surviving theropods, the hind limbs of these, and indeed most lizards, are splayed to the sides as their bipedality is only facultative. Furthermore, the hands of both differ as well, with the hands of Dilophosaurus being non-pronated, meaning the palms are pointed inwards, not downwards, positioned to grab prey, while the hands of Macrochlamydos are held in a pronated position as they run, being only locomotor and not raptorial limbs. But, turning to the most noticeable differences between the two, let's talk about the frill. This large and very colorful frill acts as a defense mechanism against potential predators, making the lizard appear much larger than it actually is. And, while it is a prominent feature of Macrochlamydos, as far as fossil evidence and time travel have been able to determine, it is completely absent in Dilophosaurus weatherily or any other dinosaur species we've studied so far. As far as we can tell, it was retained in Indian's false Dilophosaurus, either due to the complications caused by its removal at a surgical or genetic level, or simply to make it more appealing to potential investors in the company. This huge frill is anchored to the neck and head thanks to the two crests that distinguish this species, holding the muscles needed to quickly extend it. These two crests are undoubtedly the cause for this species being used to de-extinct the Dilophosaurus. 
While Indian's genetic alterations certainly exaggerated this feature as a way to increase the similarity to the extinct dinosaur, the prehistoric appearance of this animal has already been pointed out before this, with many freak shows across the world presenting members of this species as living dinosaurs in the past. Even more impressive is the second line of defense of these lizards, as when their threatening display does not do the trick, they will spit venom at their attackers. See, despite Indian's attempts at assuring the general public that this is a completely normal and paleontologically accurate trait, there is no evidence any dinosaurs were capable of spitting venom. This venom is composed of very irritating protein-based toxins, as well as a high concentration of sodium acetate. It will be shot by squeezing the venom glands located at the lower jaw, with enough strength to propel the glob of venom across several meters. Upon leaving the lizard's body, this venom will become very viscous thanks to the aforementioned sodium acetate, which will mix with saliva as it exits the reptile's mouth, hardening quickly. Once it impacts its target, the venomous secretion will become stuck to them. When impacting larger animals, be them predators or potential dangers of any kind, this venom will cause extreme irritation, or if the face is struck, it can suffocate or blind the attacker. On smaller animals, the effect is much more dramatic, leaving them unable to move or escape as Macrochlamydos approaches. In particular, the giant frilled lizards have been seen using this venom to knock birds out of the sky. Well, as a research center, our commitment to scientific truth forces us to expose these lies, we can only hope Indian will <clears throat> step up their game if they wish to continue along this road. While we cannot condone the extinction of such animals for ethical reasons, we do not doubt there is great potential to be realized in such a line of research, as long as Indian abandons such nonsensical goals before it is too late. And that's it for a speculative biology look into the Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park. And big thanks to Alec Foisy for having commissioned this episode, and working out the details of its biology with me. I know a lot of people have wanted to see something from this series, and I've honestly struggled on how to work this out, since these animals are supposed to be, for all intents and purposes, dinosaurs. And the fact that their creation depends on pretty much perfect genetic engineering makes it hard to figure out just what exactly we could talk about in one of these episodes. In this case, Alec had the idea of using the recent, notice the huge sarcastic quotes, the extension of the dire wolf by colossal biosciences, using a modern, barely modified animal that is quite unrelated to the one they are supposed to be bringing back. And with this concept in the open, I do plan to take on different ideas for how different dinosaurs from the Jurassic Park franchise could be de-extinct, including the frog DNA thing, the chicken saurus, and other methods. So I hope you guys had fun, and do let me know what other de-extinction ideas you have for how future episodes could go. Big thanks to everyone who has asked to see something from the Jurassic Park series. And of course, thank you too to our researchers and research associates who support us through Patreon and YouTube memberships. And once again, to Alec Foisy for commissioning this episode. Remember, you too can join in if you want to support our channel, and you get some nice perks too, like seeing all of our creatures and videos ahead of time and helping mold them into shape. Or you can also like, subscribe, or write a comment telling me any type of creature you would like me to give the spec evo treatment in the show, or even commission your own episode for the channel. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.